you should always make sure you have a friend that has a truck, <laughs> is, <laughs> is what I know. Anyways. It's true. It's true. Hey there, and welcome to the Midweek Moment, where we talk about faith and life and how the two come together. Today, we're going to be talking about friendship and the power of friendships with purpose. And I'm really excited because we have uh, Brooks Fuller on uh, this episode, and Brooks is our pastor of community, our pastor of life groups, and um, super stoked to have you, man. Thanks, dude. Happy to be here, for yeah. sure. Hey, let's dive right into the conversation because we have a lot to talk about. Um, my first question to you is, obviously, friendships are powerful. Um, how have you seen the power of friendship play out in your life? You know, I've seen friendships be both positive and also negative in my life. Um, you know, the saying goes that you, can, you can't pick your family, but you can't pick your friends, you know? So when I think about the times I've struggled the most of my life, I kind of look back and reflect and I could see the impact of the friend circles that I had around me and just the, the, the way that it impacted my relationship with the Lord. So it can have a, friends can have a really negative impact, but also can have a super positive impact. And I was thinking about it, you know, there's times I've seen in my life that friends have provided support, that like God has given me different friends at different times in my life when I really needed support. Like I, I one time when I was uh, 18 years old, I was living in England and I was going to this Bible school and I got super depressed. I got really depressed. And I don't know if it was the rain or the, the, uh, the sheep on the fields or whatever, but dude, I was just bummed. And it was like this heavy cloud I couldn't get over. And I realize now that I was really struggling to to let go of something to God. I was, I was struggling to surrender it to the Lord. And God just sent me this friend. He sent me this guy. His name was Chris. He was from Canada, of all places. And dude, he was just there for me. He, he was willing to listen when I was struggling. And he wasn't ever judgmental. He was just like with me in the funk. And I look back on that and think, wow, God, like you were so good to me during that time, just by giving me that guy in my life. Uh, I've also seen friendships be super encouraging. And one thing I realized too, is like friendships, when they're positive, they can give you a really great perspective on your life, you know, cause you can, you can get in your head really easily, but when you have someone that's able to look into your life from outside, they're able to give you a totally new way of looking at something. Like my wife and I have been in transition for several years. And recently I just had some a friend speak in my life and I just didn't know what to do. And he, all I could see was a negative stuff. And then he looked in and was like, but I see all these other really positive things there. And have you even considered those? So those were I think, all super powerful for me. Yeah, no, I love that a lot uh, because there's wisdom you know, and when you're when you're in the thick of it, and you know you're feeling the loneliness and the pressure and the indecision, and God, what do I do about this? It's so helpful to have godly voices, absolutely, to be able to speak into, especially decision making, into the funk and the loneliness that we feel. Uh, we talked about this in this weekend's message. By the way, if you haven't had a chance to check out the weekend's message, make sure you click on the link in the description to watch the message. But we talked about the epidemic of loneliness. You know, we've heard of the pandemic, obviously we're in a pandemic, but there's this, there's this epidemic of loneliness where we are so connected in our world in the 21st century, and yet more and more people are feeling loneliness and they're alone. And I feel like this is where the power of friendship and godly friendship really is important. And it's something that we need to cultivate. So thank you for that reminder. Absolutely. Um, my next question to you is, um, what do I need to do? to be a godly friend to somebody else? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I think the first thing you need to be is just be available. You know, like I know there's the adage of like, if you need to move, who are you gonna call? You know, because those are your real friends because they'll come and help you move, right? I mean, who wants to help carry a couch and an old furniture and- You should always make sure you have a friend that has a truck, <laughs> is, <laughs> is what I know, anyways. It's true, it's true. But you know, being available to people is a great first step. You know, like making time in your life for people says a lot about your intentionality with them, that you legitimately care for them. And so that's a strong message to send. So be available. I think being a great listener is really important too. Um, being willing to be intentionally hearing what's going on in someone's life and uh, really seeking first to listen before you speak, I think can be really powerful in people's lives. I think there's a lot of people that really want to be heard 
Uh, and so being a godly friend can allow you to just give people space to just pour out their heart to you. And I think the third thing that comes to my mind is just this idea of really working to get to know the people that you want to develop friendships with. It seems like a, a no brainer, you know, that you're going to ask questions, right. Or, um, be intentional about finding out who these people are, uh, because I think you start to find commonalities. That's what I do with my friendships. Is I'm always trying to find a commonality with someone. A lot of times, uh, like I just met someone this weekend at the service and I don't know this dude at all. He's like off to the side. I'm like, man, he's at the very edge of, of the service. He's really, does he want to be here? I don't know. Uh, and I, we were talking about soccer and I was bumming because my team Arsenal were getting their butts kicked my man city. And you know, he said, oh, you're an Arsenal fan. I'm a Chelsea fan. And I was like, oh, and immediately my mind snapped, like connection. Like that's a great point of connection. So not only, you know, do we have faith connection, but now we have like a love for the game kind of a thing. So it, it helps when you ask questions to get to know people because it, it shows that you are intentionally wanting to, to learn more about them. But also it helps you to know how you can love people. Um, Brandon Manning in his book, uh, The Lion and the Lamb, he talks about this story of these these two guys that were these uh, friends that were uh, at some bar and they were drinking and they were they were like saying to each other, I love you, man. And the other guy's like, I love you too. Sounds about right. Yeah, exactly. And he, he looked at him and he turned to his friend and said, he said, Peter, uh, tell me what hurts me. And then Peter, tur- Peter turned and looked at him and said, how am I supposed to know what hurts you? And he said, how can you say you love me if you don't know what hurts me? And I feel like that has always stood out to me as I heard that story. It's like, yeah, how can I really say that I love someone if I'm, if I'm not willing to, to, to join into what they're working on and to, to work, um, to walk with them through those things. And so if you spend all of your time talking about yourself or you show little interest in the, what someone's going through, I know it takes energy, it takes time, but that's how you find a way to love someone is when they're really in need of that, you know? Yeah, no, and I, I totally agree. We talked about soul friends, you know, people who know your soul on the inside. And those are the friends that know the best of you and they know the worst of you. And there's an element and an aspect of not just relationships, but friendships that are messy because we're messy human beings and, you know, there's brokenness. And just being able to sit in the ashes of people in hurt and heartache and sadness, I think that's friendship in its truest power. Not that it's, you know, everything is just negative and we just right. sit in sadness all the time, but there has to be a balance because life is, there's Absolutely. an ebb and flow to life. And so I, I think you're right on there with that. Yeah. Cause that's, that's who God is with us too. You know, like that's what compassion really is, is that God sees us in our times of great need And the Bible says all the time that he had compassion when he saw the crowds without a shepherd. He had compassion for the woman that was on her way to bury her son and she was a widow and she was just, just her life was wrecked and he saw her and his heart moved for, with pity for what she was going through. And then he acted on that. So I think if, if we have that perspective too, like God, the way that you are with me, I want to be that with other people then that's where love flows from. That's where forgiveness comes. That's when um, being willing just to sit in the muck and mire with someone, not trying to rush them out of it, but just be willing to be there with them. That's authentic friendship. And that's what changes people's lives. Yeah. I, I heard of this analogy, a true friend, when you're in the in the darkest pit of your life, he he doesn't, or he or she doesn't try to pull you out of it. They hop in the pit with you. Yeah, that's right? great. And I think that's the power of friendship. So, um, last question: um, Maybe there's someone who's listening, and maybe they're new to the city. They don't know anybody. Uh, how can they move towards uh, discovering friendships? Or maybe someone who's experienced hurt because of a pre- previous friendship, um, and they're they have their guards up, and you know they don't want to do it again because of what they've experienced. Um, how would you encourage people, or what is something a person can do to take a step towards developing friendships? Yeah, I mean, I'd say a big step that they can take is to join a life group. Um, I know that you know that's what I do here, so I'm not just saying it because I should. You know, I just I've seen um, God work when people join into a group and share even a single commonality. Like if you can find even a single commonality and uh, that you can see eye to eye on 
then God can use that to begin to like go deeper and work and combine hearts and all those things. And that commonality really is our faith in Christ. And so, you know, wherever you're at as a Christian, if you're questioning, uh, if you just need, like you said, like a friend, I would say join a small group. Definitely. You'll find um, not only commonality, but you'll find people there that want to know you just because of you, not because they want anything from you, um, but no just be- angle. Exactly, no exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. just being willing to do life with each other, I think just begins to create trust. If there's been hurt, you know, it, it begins to just provide healing where it's needed. And, you know, we're not perfect, so your life groups aren't necessarily going to be perfect either, but you'll find people that are genuinely there that will care about you and want to see you grow in your faith. And I, I think those two combinations are a way to have a really positive impact in your life. That's for awesome. Sure. So let's talk nuts and bolts. How does someone get plugged into a life group? Well, uh, you can go to newbreak.church backslash groups, and you'll find all of our groups that are running right now. Uh, we go a semester by semester basis right now. So we are in the middle of a semester, but there's still time to join. Um, you can join groups based upon you know topics that you might be interested in, or even... Um, maybe if there's a particular day of the week that you have free, it's like, wow, maybe Tuesday nights are the only night that you can join a group. Well, we can, if you go to the website, you can, um, check those groups out there too. Uh, but you can also call me, you know, you can, you can email me. My email is brooks at newbreak.org. And I'd love to hook you up and get you in a group that works for you. That's so awesome. Well, thank you for your wisdom and, of course, for being on today's episode. I mean, I learned a lot from you, and there's just so many areas of friendship that I could grow in, so I really appreciate you being on this episode. Um, Thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, if this content was helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel to get content just like this every week. Until next week, God bless you. We hope to see you soon.